ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm doing my best AMD motherboards of 2017 roundup. It's the best B350, X370, and X399 boards. So for this, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Uh, instead of doing sort of best value in all these different categories, I thought I'd make it nice and easy and do just the best of the best. So price isn't a factor, value isn't a factor, it's just which one is the best. You know, the best B350, best X370, and best X399 board. Now, of course, if I haven't tested the motherboard, then it's not going to be featured in this video. Although I will say that it's not just out of the ones I reviewed, because there's plenty of other AMD motherboards I tested, but I never ended up making an independent review of that motherboard for a variety of reasons. Maybe I ran out of time. Uh, maybe I just used it for one specific video, things like that. Um, but for the most part, these were boards that I did reviews on. So that's basically it. You know, if you're thinking, oh, well, you didn't test that many. Uh, it's also an issue being here in New Zealand. It can be quite hard to get all the motherboards. But I think I got through a lot of the main ones anyway, the main uh, motherboards that people were telling me to check out. So let's start with the B350s then. And for this one, I picked the MSI B350 Tomahawk. So this is quite an expensive B350, but it's very solid across the board. It overclocked really well with my Ryzen 1700, has a solid I.O. and great features. It has a few downsides though, like it only has four SATA ports, which might be limiting to some people out there. No dual BIOS either, so that's going to be an issue. I think enthusiasts dislike that, but I mean most enthusiasts I think would go towards the X370 platform anyway. I just love the look of it, and if I had to pick a B350, that's the one I would go for. Now, it is pretty expensive as far as B350s go, so value-wise, obviously, there's another argument to be made there. But in terms of purely how good it is, that's the one I would pick, and I really like the uh, MSI B350 Tomahawk. It's just a great little motherboard, and even then, an expensive B350 is still cheaper than the cheapest X370, at least here in New Zealand, so it's not really that pricey at the end of the day. Speaking of X370s, let's talk about the best X370. And this one was a little bit harder for me to pick. So I decided on the ASUS ROG X370 Crosshair 6 Hero. So this is a board that's 100% made for enthusiasts. It has heaps of features, there's loads to play with in the BIOS, it overclocked really well and there's like a million USB ports out the back. It has a fantastic VRM, the audio is really solid, and it's just an awesome X370, but once again, it's on the expensive side of things. Granted, you know, obviously when you pay more, you're going to get these better motherboards. Not always the case, but most of the time. This one was a little bit hard for me to pick because I was also, I, I kind of wanted to pick the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming K7 X370. That was also really good. But I think the ASUS board is better. At the start, before the ASUS board got a few BIOS updates, I would have probably have gone for the Gigabyte. But now that the ASUS board has had quite a few BIOS updates, um, the BIOS is way better than how it was when it first launched. I would say you're probably better off with the ASUS board, but they're both going to be really, really solid. Uh, you'll pay quite a bit for both of these motherboards, but yeah, if you want a really good X370, especially on the Ryzen platform, I think buying, it's, it's sort of more worth it to buy these more expensive motherboards because you're probably going to be staying on that board for quite some time as the new Ryzen CPUs come out. You won't need to change motherboard as often say with Intel. So uh, that's quite good. So I think it can be worth forking out the extra bucks for these really solid uh, X370 boards if you are an, an enthusiast um, to take advantage of them because I think it'll serve you better in the long term in terms of future proofing. Now let's move over to the top of the line, the enthusiast platform X399. So for this, I picked the ASRock X399 Tai Chi. This is the best X399 board I tested, for sure. I had no issues with it. My one came with the LOT socket, although some of them seem to come with the Foxconn socket, which would be a bit of a letdown. Luckily, you only have to install the CPU once. Well, for most people, reviewers are different. For you guys, you'll probably just chuck your thread ripper in the one time. So you should be fine. But uh, yeah, I would hopefully, you know, if you can go in the store and actually physically check that it has a LOTS one first, then that would be the best thing. 
Uh, the VRM is, is fantastic. It's just absolutely awesome. The same with the BIOS, and it's just loaded up with features, which is exactly what you expect on X399. It's the enthusiast platform, the top platform. You want all the bells and whistles. You're definitely paying for it. These are not cheap motherboards, that is for sure. Although the Tai Chi isn't too bad when compared to the other X399 boards. So that is the one I would personally go for. I had no issues with it. I made my X399 as a mess video. Um, and that was mainly talking about the MSI boards and the Gigabyte boards, but the the and and the ASUS boards have had issues too. But the ASRock ones seem to be somewhat immune to it. They've had very very few, so that's the one I would go for. But speaking of MSI, as you guys may know, I'm running the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. I also recommend that motherboard. It is very solid. It's a very good motherboard, but I I just the, the Tai Chi is better. It's just a better board, I just have to say. Um, I have had a few issues with the Gaming Pro Carbon. Most of them have come right through BIOS updates. This platform is still very new and AMD is still sorting out it. It's their first time up on this enthusiast platform, so I expected there to be problems. These are complicated motherboards with a complicated CPU and Threadripper. So I expected this to happen. But uh, yeah, so I would give it to the Threadripper for, uh, the Threadripper, the Tai Chi for sure. Well, the Threadripper for sure as well in terms of best enthusiast CPU. But I already said that in my best CPUs video. So you can go back and watch that if you haven't checked it out already. So yeah, that's going to round out this video, uh, my best motherboards of 2017, at least on the AMD side. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, do you agree with my choices? Or do you disagree? Which ones would you pick for each category if you disagree with my choices? I'd really like to know. I mean, I, I like to think I have tested these motherboards well, um, but you guys may have had different experiences to me. So let me know in the comment section down below which ones you would pick for your best B350, best X370, and best X399 boards. Remembering, though, that I didn't bring price into the equation uh, in this particular video. It was just straight up about the best one in each category, price aside. Now, I thank you all for watching this video, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't already uh, to my channel, Tech Showdown, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.